please welcome Jonathan Bay. Over the years, the HRC has celebrated so many. But when it comes to queer heroes, Matt Bowman tops them all. The impact of his work fighting for queer lives is rightly being honoured this evening. Matt had the courage to acknowledge his sexuality publicly just over a decade ago, at a time where his career was already soaring. He chose to do this in an industry which then, as it does now, dresses up as inclusive whilst being riddled with discrimination. Executive produced by and led by our very own Matt Bomer. We should take Matt's lead and continue with that courage to make room for other underrepresented stories and storytellers. Each colour on the pride flag should ask itself, what am I doing? to help make space for those less represented than me. So, thank you, Matt, for your courage, for your impact on our community, and for rising above any unfortunate trade-offs which inevitably came from representing it. You may be 50 shades of gay, <laughs> but you will always be my Superman. Everyone, go wild for this year's recipient of the HRC Impact Award. It's Matt Boma! Thank you, HRC. It's a bit surreal to be here in our nation's capital and accept this incredible award in a room full of so many of my heroes, people I admire, and a community that I love and am deeply proud to be a part of. Not to mention the President and First Lady of the United States. What an honor to be in the same room with them. I feel like Taylor Swift at a Kansas City Chiefs game. I'm not I'm not sure if I deserve all this attention, but I'm thankful for the great seats. Um, I have to thank my lovely friend Jonathan for that introduction. I admire you so much, Jonathan. He's not only a tremendously giving and talented actor, he's someone who lives his life to the fullest. He's an avid cyclist, runs triathlons, he's climbed Everest, people. He's always raising money for wonderful causes. He's that friend we all have who makes you realize you're really not doing enough with your life. Jonathan and I will soon play two men who meet at a DC event, not so far from where we are tonight, and begin a passionate, clandestine affair that lasted four decades. It's a collaboration I'm very proud of, and it proves that, yes, finding love in the capital is possible. <laughs> My husband didn't think that joke was going to land, but thank you. Um, <laughs> receiving this award, something that the little kid inside me still feels undeserving of, made me seriously reflect on my past. I'm not going to lie, it's been a tricky journey at times. For too much of my life and career, I lived with a lot of fear. I was raised in a very conservative family in town where certain things just weren't accepted. And rather than fight them, I became very good at bifurcating my life, separating it into different compartments. This is public, and this is private. This is who I am at work, and this is who I am at home. I didn't realize how much years of compartmentalization would hurt and hold me back. Luckily, I met this extraordinary man by the name of Simon Halls, who I fell madly in love with. <laughs> Simon was the first person to let me know that every part of myself was not only acceptable, but to be shared and celebrated. 
He and our three boys helped to make me whole. And I'm eternally grateful to them for the immense joy and love they've given me. I'm a proud dad and a lucky husband. My personal life with Simon hit right as Hollywood was handing me everything I ever wanted in a career but never thought I'd get. A hit TV show, a big studio movie, lots of opportunities. And instead of feeling overjoyed that I was finally living the life I dreamed of, I felt the weight of so many people who were invested in my image being perceived in a certain way, a way that wasn't true to who I am. My mind kept replaying the dangerous words of certain executives who earlier in my career told me, leading men can't be gay. 